Let's uh, cross live now to Eugene Perrier from the Anti-War Answer Coalition. We've got him on the line now. Thanks so much for joining us from uh, Washington, D.C. I believe you're in there. Um, Eugene, our correspondent just said it there, President Obama's decision. It comes um, shortly after the U.S. administration said it, it didn't have any immediate plans. It had the capability now after the signing of the bill, but no immediate plans to introduce further sanctions. Yet we're hearing this now affecting Crimea. Why the change of mind, do you think? Well, I, I think it, it was an issue of the European powers. I think certainly that the president was trying to make sure that he was linked up with the EU before they proceeded. And, and you know, perhaps it's an effectiveness piece. Perhaps it's just a coalition piece, wanting to make sure that those who you have to work in close concert with are, you know, happy with the way the alliance or the coalition is working together. But either way, it seems to me that the key factor was that the president had everything together but did not want to move forward without European nations. What's the significance, would you say, of this move? Why Crimea and why in particular businesses there? I think the significance of this move is, is clearly to, uh, to hype up the United States' narrative that for somehow Russia has been a bad actor in eastern Ukraine. And this is despite the fact, and, and also with Crimea, this is despite the fact that Crimea is historically a part of Russia, despite the fact that uh, the United States supported a fascist coup in Ukraine, despite the fact that the United States has supported several elections in Afghanistan that have been anywhere from completely to a little bit fraudulent. And ultimately what it is is to help the United States build the narrative that Russia is an expansionist power that is, you know, land hungry and resource hungry and that they must be countered by the United States. Because if the true narrative, which is that there has been significant Western aggression against Russia, an attempt to contain Russia in the post-Soviet period, was what people saw, you wouldn't really be able to build or curry favor in this country for sanctions. Um, the, the sanctions, uh, I mean, they, they continue, they grow. We have the US, the EU, Canada with uh, fresh names that they've put on a sanctions list. Uh, it comes at a time when Ukraine and Russia are supposedly working towards peace. What effect upon that peace process will these new sanctions have? Well, I think from the point of view of the United States government, they hope that it will make the Russian government more willing to compromise. I think that if we judge by how events have gone so far, it actually only drives the two parties further apart, as Ukraine actually doesn't even really seem to be the key actor here. I mean, for them to say that they're negotiating on a level of equals, and then to have the two most, the most powerful country, and then the European countries, so the two most powerful blocks of countries in the world, then put their thumb on the scale, as it were, and try to influence negotiations, I think from the point of view of the Russians and the point of view of anyone, it makes Ukraine look as if they are not a key actor and if really uh, the West is calling the tune. So, you know, perhaps it won't affect the negotiations at all, but I think ultimately the, the point of it is to attempt to force Russia to compromise on Ukraine's uh, terms or really Western terms that are being put forward by Ukraine. Okay, we've just been hearing the thoughts of uh, Eugene Perrier from the Anti-War Answer Coalition. Eugene, thanks so much for coming on to speak to us.